welcome. Alan, the show is yours. Awesome. <clears throat> well, I'm going to give uh, just a few basic principles. Um, this is where people should start out. Um, a lot of this work, uh, which has taken years of, I'll call it a scientific approach, um, it, it, and you'll see why, and then we're going to start with that, and you don't need to be a scientist. Um, yes, I have actually built a cold fusion device. Yes, I love physics and math. Uh, you don't need to do all that, but I'm going to give you a little bit of the background so that you have the appreciation because as you know, we know, uh, well, I don't believe I see that it works. And it's like, yep, I understand that and, and I need to develop my own rules. Well, no, but you can, you can and should uh, make adjustments to what we offer you, personality, because uh, we're not here to make people's personalities different. What we're here to do is to give you a bunch of tools, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot of thinking behind all this um, to make it work. And so I'm going to start out with the things you should not fight uh, or the things you should go with because it's in your favor. And the whole point of all this is to have things in your favor so that you're having success more naturally and easily. Um, if, if the salmon did not have to swim up the stream, um, there was some other way, like uh, merrily, merrily, life is but a dream, you know, it, the, 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 the lyrics to that is you, you're rowing with the stream, not against the stream like the salmon is. It's like if there's an easier way where you're not forcing things, because you can't force the market. We're not affecting the market at all when we're buying options. And even if you're buying stocks uh, on the, the level that we're, you have almost no impact. There's $250 billion gets exchanged every day, uh, sometimes more, on the, the exchanges that we're talking about. So if you've got a $100,000 account, you're not moving the market whole hundred thousand dollars on one stock not for the stocks that we're talking about these things all have millions of shares traded each day and each share is worth you know you know ten to a hundred or even a thousand dollars so this is about going with the flow of things and not fighting stuff uh, so you want the wind at your back you want this to be easy so we're going to talk about a couple things. This here, the, the thing on the screen here is called the basket. It's uh, all the stocks that we're looking at. Why we care is because if the whole market is moving in a, in a certain direction, the odds are that some stock that is, I'll call it neutral, uh, where people don't hate it and they're not passionately buying it that day in that moment and not like excited about it, uh, most stocks will move along with the market. If your stock is, um, let's say the market is having a, a, I'll call it a green day, meaning that it's moving up, uh, and your stock is, is people are actually liking, then your odds of success of buying in the up direction on a stock that people already like, your odds of success are rare. So principle number one is we want to go with the market. We don't want to fight the market. And so we've got a few indicators that are quite helpful. One of them, uh, we call it the mag line, and it's a uh, moving average genius. It, uh, it adjusts its line based on the time frame that you're using. If you're new to charting, I'm just going to talk about a couple things here on the chart. Let me just uh, get out the drawing pen here, draw a couple of things here. So this here is called a candle and uh, it, that represents all the trading that happened in one time frame so for example in this time frame it's got a green body that's the this part here that means that the uh, the opening price was there that's where the price started right there and uh, it it traveled all the way to this low down there traveled up to a high up here, but it ended the price right there. That was the closing price for that time period. Now in this case, we're looking at five minutes per candle. Um, all the trades that happen in that five minutes are represented in that candle. 
So in this candle here, uh, yeah, there's two of them here, but anyways, that one there, it it opened here and then it closed there. So in that time frame, the price went up and down, but it ended lower. And so that's important to know is, is that's telling us the direction that at, at, that, at that time frame, the, the prices were moving down. This is, uh, you get to start to see patterns once you say, oh, okay, so I've got some green movement in this area here is generally green. I've got more green candles than I've got red candles. And then in this section here, I've got a lot more red candles than I have green candles. And you start to see, and you don't have to do anything with this right now, but you can um, start to see that <clears throat> there's some movement here that your eye will start to naturally start to absorb these color patterns. So um, this moving average genius, that's this line here, you see that it's solid here and then it's dashed here. The solid part is it's drawing it for you to say that, you know, this actually has slope to it, meaning that it's moving strongly in an upward direction. This is probably a better time to be trading in the direction. Um, another strong principle, so we said go with the market. Uh, another rule is do not fight the mag line. That's this composite line that's dashed or solid is if you're on pen here, if you're in a trade and let's say you bought it here because you, you thought, yeah, it looks great and you had some good reasons to buy it. And then your price starts to get into this zone here where you're fighting the mag line, that's time to leave. Now if you would have just followed that one principle, you would have made money from this point to this point. And so that's the kind of stuff you're looking for is, is like, well, I had a solid line that said, yep, yeah, it's this is a good time to trade. And, you know, it started actually here. The solid line was growing somewhere in this period here. But it broke above this business. Uh, and, and that's another principle called support and resistance. So I'll give you a little bit more detail about that. But the point is, is that don't fight the mag line. So if it's dancing with this line here, uh, and it goes on the other side and you're on the green side and, and the price is below the mag line, you're on the wrong side, you're fighting the mag line. You don't want to be around for that. So here you can see it was a nice trend down and it you know the price crossed a little bit but it never closed above that mag line. So this is just again another really simple rule but took a long time to develop, first of all, to find um, the rules to draw this and what's the right numbers for mathematical and all that business. But here it is, is that uh, we don't want to be, uh, if it's green, let me get some signal color going here. Uh, let me put that thing on. So here, I'm going to add signal color. This is uh, also math that's drawing and doing some thinking for you. It says, you know, now looks like it's an alert. It looks like you should be looking to be on uh, the making money on the upward motion, or in this case, you should be considering making money on a downward motion move. It's not that you should get in at that point, but you should start looking for, is this the right time? And so there's some other, other things to think about. Uh, but these are the pieces, and, and it, you, you know, you get good at these pieces. That's what the replay is for. So you don't have to memorize all these pieces. We're just doing an overview of them. So, well, what's good about this? Well, generally, I'm above the mag line. I've got a green signal. I should be on the green side. I've got some solid here. I should get out here if I did get in. Um, I don't have some signal here. That's gone white. That's telling me that this isn't so good. By the way, the half color means that the move is stalled. It's not looking so great. Uh, so this may not be a great chart, um, but that's the beauty is you don't have to get in on everything. I only need one good trade a day. One good trade a day and you're making big money after you, know, after you build up your account. It, you're talking big money and you can quit your day job. So if this chart doesn't look ideal, then you don't trade it. That's a key principle. We're not, and we're going to go through some stocks and show you how all this stuff comes together. You go, wow, 
all that fits. Yes, it does. But we're not forcing a trade. That's a really important thing. So if none of this stuff lines up on this thing that we're looking at, then we say we don't do it. Now, just as a point of interest, over here, the stuff is lining up pretty nicely that I've got a fresh signal, I've got some solid mag line, and it's moving down. You know, and it was a nice move and it never crossed back in. That was a pretty nice move. Here, you know, I had one signal and then the second candle, which is really the, the, the key, said, yep, um, you know, I agree. Here you had the second candle, but it didn't go anywhere. But you'll also notice you've got a dashed mag line saying that there's really not much of a slope going on. Here, this thing took off and you had a nice solid mag line and it was a good move. You'll notice that the better moves have the solid mag line. But you want you want the signal colored here. <clears throat> you want some nice slope going on, but all coming together within a short. And this was an, I wouldn't get this. Why? Because it's safer not to. Because this. But we're just talking about principles. So if 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 things don't don't care, we're just talking about the tool of the puzzle that are coming together. So um, we talked about the mag line. Now the thing I did was this business here where it broke resistance. What you'll find with stocks is, is that they're in this channel and we're not interested in this cycle trade. It, is, it does this kind of stuff. You can't make money. You're actually, because by the time you get in, you pay commission and you get out. What some people do as cycle traders is they'll actually set making money and then online they'll buy it here. I don't teach cycle trading. Okay, here we go. So you can make money in big cycles. You can't make any money in little cycles unless you're uh, somebody that we're not, which is the broker with high frequency trading and all that kind of stuff. We're not those people. We're regular folk. We don't have access to crazy tools. The problem with cycle trading is you never know if this is the top or that's the top and then it goes up like this and it's against you because you sold it here, you're thinking it's going down because you're psyched. It's a crazy game. I've looked at all this in detail. You, it's not, it, it's mugs game. You just don't want to play that. The better game is you're looking for a breakout and that's a key principle that you're going to see in some charts that we're going to talk about because when it breaks out you know something right here, especially if it's got some volume going on, that something's you've got an opportunity to make money. Not a guarantee, but so uh, we've got tools that tell us all kinds of great things that this thing is the top even early. And so here's another tool. This one took years to develop. It's the Y point indicator. And uh, it'll tell us fairly early that there's a um, and you can go into settings by the way and turn these things on or you can use the hotkey. So here's the Y point. It's telling us that this is a probable top or a probable top. When you've got your second one, that's a good time to get out or make money. And it tells it to you very quickly. So it's these kinds of things, because remember I was manually drawing the support resistance? It's doing this kind of stuff for me. You'll notice, and this is not new, this has been going on for 150 years. Anything that's been going on for decades, then becomes what I would call an engineering, scientific, reliable, useful uh, thing to use. So support and resistance, you'll notice that something that was a barrier on the way up often is a barrier on the way down. This is called support and resistance. So you'll notice, isn't that interesting? That it was struggling at these points and it bounced off of these points. These are useful, very useful things to know. So the point is, is that if it breaks this line, which it did right here, then it's like, aha, something's happening, it's a breakout, it's not a cycle anymore, which is what we're looking for. 
So you've got trend indicator, which is this this uh, tint business here. You've got mag line, which tells you that there's slope. This tells you so much. You don't have to do uh, 10 years of research. I've already done that. I've read 200 and some books, and I've done huge data analysis uh, data. Uh, long term, short term, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm happy to have this conversation with people, but most people don't care. Uh, there's a few that do, and uh, but for those that do care, I'm gonna just show you that we have some things I've exposed to you. So right here, this is statistics, and I'll cover and explain some of that very quickly later. But it's available in the program. It tells you the behavior of the market over the last ten. Oh, sorry, 20 trading days, and it's been pretty much like this all the way along. So I'm looking for behavior that's repeatable. So support and resistance. So this line here is was a resistance line. It didn't like going above it. When it did, it was a trend. There's money there. It then became a support price where it's like it bounced off of it and didn't want to go below it. That's worth knowing, which means that in this zone here, it's a cycle zone. I immediately know I'm not interested in that. If it broke below this point, then maybe there's some money there, which it does later. And up here, it's telling me, you know, there's a chance that this might be heading down and that there's an opportunity to make money. So these are the core principles. And, and the problem is, is that we get so focused on all the tools that it takes a while to get back to, oh yeah, the core principles. I just need to focus on that. One, don't fight the market. Two, don't fight the mag line. Uh, don't get into cycles. I'm, I'm looking for strong probability. So it's breaking out of a zone, then um, do. Now, Steve, who's a, a good coach, he's got um, a, a 10 point thing that he, like he's got a letter for every word so that you can identify what to do. So you don't have to memorize all these things. You can just go through them as a process and say, does it fit all my rules? Otherwise, uh, it's like, well, I forgot something. So um, you want to follow. It's, it's a procedure. Anything. is If you want to be successful at it, you just follow the checklist. So we've covered four points that are really important. And um, I'm going to cover another one here, which is again about market behavior, and that was the statistics that I, I showed you briefly. We're not going to get into that because most people don't like it, uh, but there's a few people, the engineering kind of mind that do. The point is, these bars that are, the gray bars that are reaching up like that, this is telling you how big the body of the candle is, or you can call it the uh, the movement, if you will, of a price. You'll notice, and this is by time, so here it says 10.05 and 184%. That is basically telling me that at that time the movement is well above average, 184%, not like here at lunchtime. It's below average movement. It just doesn't move that strongly. So that's all we're going to really cover about this right now. And, but the, and this, this pinkish line you'll see in here. That tells you that the trading volume is very high in the morning and then it gets really low and then in the last part of the day it, it gets super high. That's that pink line right there. Okay. Um, so, okay, so that's been this way for a very long time. Uh, great, so how does that help me? Well, when we go, and let's go start looking at some stocks now. So let's go look at Here's the Dow, and I'm going to go switch to the simple mode so we're only looking at the stock. And uh, I'm going to get rid of a couple of other things here so you, you don't have to see them. Um, I'm going to get rid of some of the lines and some of the color. So here you can see that the, the stock, see how big some of these candles are? They're tall and they're fat because there's a lot of volume happening and there's some action happening and then during lunchtime you get into this cyclical I'm gonna put the time on times on the bottom here it's sort of color-coded by hour so during 
lunch, and this is not uh, a surprise, it gets even flatter on a lot of stocks, that lunchtime gets really not much goes on. See how thin the candles are? Uh, what we use is we use volumetric candles. So that tells you that thin candle means there's not much volume. If there's low volume, that's another core item. Is if there's high volume, that means there's something going on and you have a better chance of making money. So we tell people essentially don't trade during lunch. That's from here to here. There's really uh, very few times that you make money you're more likely to lose money. So do you want to be the salmon or do you want to just float downstream and just, you know, be easy with life? Is, you know, take a break. If this is uh, New York time, okay, when it says 12 o'clock, you don't want to be trading during this time because your odds of success are low, which means your odds of failure are high as a trend trader. So here, you had some trends here. So up until about 11 o'clock, you've got some nice moves. Also in the afternoon, from like uh, 1 o'clock, you can get some moves. But I like 2 o'clock better, and that's Eastern time. You can get some really nice moves happening, as you can see here. And, you know, we've got thousands and thousands of charts that you can look at, and that's what the whole point of the replay is, is uh, you, you've got... There's a thousand different days you can pick from, and it's like, well, you don't need to just uh, look at every one of them, but uh, we'll actually tell you which ones you should look at, and it tells you what happened like today, and you get to play with it, but that tool is, and that's what we're using here, is meant to make you better at what you do. So, for example, it's like, well, was there a, a good trade on this day? Well, let's go look at the list. So I'm going to bring up the list here of stocks. This is the short list I'm bringing up. It's telling me, based on some principles, that I should be looking at Amgen in the red direction. I'm just going to highlight that. Right here, see it's got that R, covering it up a little bit, but it's also, if there's a trade today in the red direction for Amgen, I should look at that because it's a breakout. Remember we talked about it. We're looking for a breakout. This is multiple days down here. This is the past uh, seven days is on the bottom. Breakouts, okay, I'm remember, just going to jump trend. in for a second, Alan. And for Abundio, yeah. what we're looking at is uh, out of 5,500 stocks over on the top left, uh, the Waves of Profit program has picked out about six or seven that, that it thinks you should be paying attention to. So Based on our math and everything else, those are like the really good. Not necessarily the only ones, but really good. And so this is our kind of simplified version. The top chart is today's kind of every five minutes, I think, right? Yeah, five minutes per candle. So this is today broken down by five minutes on the top. The bottom is five days, Alan, and uh, so 60 minute candles. For, yeah. for five for five days, right? So when yeah. he's what he's talking about is on a daily basis, if if a stock is going into uncharted territory, so there's it hasn't been at that price for five or six days, it's what we call a breakout, which means that the thing could just run like crazy because there's no support or resistance to stop it in the last five days. It probably is you know, in the last two weeks or in the last month or in the last year, depending on where it is. Uh, if it's at all-time highs, obviously it isn't. So um, so I just wanted to kind of take a second and, because we we use this all the time. We just think you'll automatically know what it is we're talking about. And I just wanted to explain what the three sections were. These are the stocks that we think have the best, mm -hmm. oh, not us, but the program says really look at these stocks. And then this is above that is today on a basically five minutes. So you can see that at the beginning of the day it dropped down, then it had a little bit of a pullback, then it went sideways, and then it dropped down again. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you look at the last five days, it's getting in territory where you could you're more likely to see it just collapse than you are to see it go to all time highs. Is is kind of I think what Alan is saying. So I just wanted to. Clarify that if it needed clarifying. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Yeah, it's good. 
So uh, here's why that stock is a candidate. Now the short list is this business over here, uh, and that's done for you. But why uh, we're looking at that, and why I, th you know, this is a good opportunity, is this. Uh, at you'll see here, it says previous low. I just got the cursor over that. So, but on the the time frame, looking back here, let me clear some of this clutter here. On the time frame here. This stock was, um, in the last bunch of days, it was getting lower and lower, and people don't like it. That's just the simple way of saying it, is people don't like this stock. And, uh, yeah, it, should, it could come back, and yes, but the, lately, and this is all I care about, is lately people don't like that stock. And so here's that same chart, a little bit bigger, and um, let me just get rid of the, the time on here. So on a daily basis, you know, this is every candle is an hour. Um, you can see that all of a sudden, somewhere in here, um, it was it broke that support price, and and people were selling it and selling it, and selling it. And this includes part of the day that we're looking at is right here. So when it breaks a previous low which was this guy's price, you can see that that was a support price right here. Then it's like, hey, there's an opportunity to make money. Now this is what happened, this candle was inside today, so we'll go back to that chart. And uh, I'm going to make this just the singular chart. So this is just today again. Um, why is this a great stock? Well, because already people don't like it. And uh, so that's what part of that red marker there is, is like you should be looking for stuff on the red side. So if the market's running red and people already don't like this stock, then this is probably one of the better stocks for me to be looking at in a red direction. So you've got the red tint back here. Um, we're going to talk about what pivot and SA is briefly. Uh, Steve knows all this stuff extremely well, so he'll he'll be able to explain all that. And you can come back to the video for the overview, but he'll give you the details about why this stuff's very powerful. But I've got a red signal. If I turn on the uh, the mag line, it's like look how solid that is from way back up here. And uh, I've already got the inclination that this is a good stock to be going on the red direction. There's nothing wrong with this trade. This is a great trade. Now, if you're a little bit more of a cautious trader, you'd say, well, the time for me to get in would be when it breaks that previous low, which is a, a seven-day low. And uh, by the way, you can't barely see it here, but there's a 20-day low right here. So you see that was a support price from 20 days ago, and that's why this stuff is on here, is on the chart, is it's telling you that this is probably a place that's going to bounce. This previous low is also another place that it might bounce. And, and these things here I'm going to talk about are also places that a stock may bounce. This kind of formula is, is a published formula. Some of these other ones are not published but are used by quants in high frequency trading. It's like very powerful stuff. You'll notice that this price here, which was calculated when the day began, ended up being a bounce point. And I've traded for years not knowing these numbers, reverse engineered them, and it's like, why is this bounce at this price, that price, and that price? Well, see, you'll notice it dances around this price a lot. Well, that's because it's the previous low. See, it's not, um, well, some of it is actually rock, rocket science, but some of it is not. It's just like, um, this is traders' behavior, and why I love this stuff is because it's I can I have data that proves that this stuff's been around for decades, which means that it's probably a useful tool for decades, uh, as compared to some other people's formulas that work for a little while and then they don't, and it's whatever. It's like I like the stuff that you can, and that's why we have the replays. You can test it out and say, well, is that a reliable? Uh, because if you're putting money on the line, you want to know that that thing's going to be there for you, not just for a long haul. So, and, and again, just getting back to previous, this is why the red tint is an alert that something could happen. It's not a go do something. You want the second candle 
in this case to break below that 20 day uh, bottom. If that broke below then you might have another run, another trend happening here. So uh, I'm going to talk about a couple other principles and then um, I think that's probably enough for today. But uh, the opening price is on the chart and by the way you know with settings and uh, here's the toolbar is these are all the things you can bring up so here's settings and settings will tell you well gee I, you know I want the opening price on here okay well somewhere in here it's, it says opening price and you can turn all these things on on and off and it'll save your settings and you can have you know you don't have to memorize all this and Steve can walk you through that and we're building more help videos that walk you through all that stuff so, and they're short videos like three minutes and it tells you oh okay that's how that works so um, all these things you can turn on you like and, and you don't have to have stuff you don't like but um, some of the cool stuff and I'm just gonna hide a couple things so you can see a little bit easier is you remember this target price here that I showed you this one here that says hey by the way uh, these are places that things like to stall, bounce, turn around. Um, that's what this number here is and you can make that font bigger and change the color and you can change the colors and all that stuff but uh, we don't recommend you doing that because it, it drives your coach crazy because he'll say where's the blue line and you go I don't have a blue line. <laughs> It's like, yeah, well, you, you change it to purple, and it's like, okay. Anyways, this tells me how much room I have, uh, $1.68, before I hit my next bounce point. That's really useful. That tells me that, remember we talked about cycles? See, like, here's a bunch of, here's a cycle zone. This is nasty stuff. You don't want to be in that side. And that's why when you're, you don't want to fight the opening price. You want to go ride in the direction of the opening price. So we'll go grab that but we won't grab this and we won't grab all this junk in here uh, and we might grab this if there if there's another opportunity uh, that we'll go grab that maybe and uh, so these are the general principles is we don't want to fight stuff we want to go work with the direction of things remember so look there was the signal that said hey you know there might be an opportunity to make money here what did the mag line say? Well, actually, it started drawing solid back here. You just broke a previous low, so there's probably a bit of money to be made. But the places that it's likely to stop, and you see, this is great stuff to know, is you might get stopped out here, and it might bounce on you here, and it might bounce there. See, it broke this bounce point. So that's very, very powerful stuff to know. Is like I, if I'm getting in here. I'm probably going to have to get out here. Is there enough money in there to get out? And uh, you can usually make your 10% in these kinds of things. In these kinds of places, you can make more than 10%. We always recommend that you just go for 10%. Um, unless the trade goes against you, then you just get out. Um, but we recommend 10%. When you get more experienced and you know which trades are better trades that you actually might have and it's rarer, like one in ten chance uh, that it'll go more than ten percent. So you don't want to be putting all your money on, oh yeah, it's going to go to the moon. I've seen more traders lose money out of greed telling the, telling the stock market, oh no, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going and going and going. And it's like, no, that you have no influence on the market. You can yell at the clouds to, to move away, but it's not going to become uh, you know the weather doesn't change just because you're yelling at the sky and and yelling at the the market or hoping isn't going to change it either you see we don't do that we just go with that's what all the stats and probabilities are for that's what all this stuff is this is this is a lot of research that's there at your fingertips that tells you hey you know what uh, and we can talk more about that when you want but you don't need to do all the research it's been done you just need to use the tools. So here, Amgen was on the short list. Here's the short list that said, hey, you know, red's looking good. If you get a red move, go for that today. If Amazon has a green move, that. And what are the things? I'm starting to recap some of it for you here. I'm looking for opening price. I'm looking for it to be above a previous high or at least 
uh, that you know in lately people love the stock now this was a big gap uh, we'll talk about that Steve I wanted to teach you a little bit about uh, big gaps I know you know some things but I want to give you a little more detail uh, if we can we'll do that on this day trading day but if there's a green move on this stock there might be a chance to make some money is what uh, this G which is repeated here is telling us is like hey look there's an opportunity if you see it go for it if it meets the rules and uh, you know do you have a mag line did it continue to go higher those are skinny candles I don't like it um, I don't I don't need to grab every trade I'm not greedy I'm actually a conservative trader I look for the better trades I could have traded this but it doesn't fit my rules I don't need I, I only need you know you want to be a millionaire with this system uh, there's a there's a, a finance professor out of uh, one of the universities he actually looked at our program uh, he's using it uh, he likes it and he worked out an Excel sheet he says if all you do is you make 10% a day and you start out with uh, you know like a five thousand dollar account um, you'll have a half million dollars in your account in about uh, 13 months and this, this is a finance professor so that's why it's like I just want one good trade a day I'm not trying to grab everything and remember that's where most people fail is because they get greedy so here it said grab green on this one here it says if you see a red move if it looks good grab it well in this case it didn't look good until even there that was an old move doesn't fit the rules doesn't fit the rules uh, but in the morning there was an opportunity to grab a red run uh, and it did fit the rules and it was a pretty fast trade and remember in the first until 11 o'clock those are so I wouldn't grab that why because it could just as easily clipped up clipped down when you've seen enough charts you start to know these things so I'm not looking for all the, the crazy trades well here's one that fits the rules in the afternoon uh, this is the the Dow it fit all the rules this business the opening price you got red I'm looking for red uh, I had strong signal I had a strong I had a good mag line color uh, was the market running red at that time that's another piece of it which is what this instrumentation up here tells you is is that this is for this time of the day here but that instrumentation so all you have to do basically is be looking at this stuff you don't have to look at we've made this thing as about as simple as it can get um, so because Dow is basically the market it's not quite the same but it's uh, you know high odds of making money right there so you okay, can Alan, the red side Alan? the green side hello yeah. um, before we go could you let's just run through yeah. a couple trades so can you so one of the things we can do Abundio, is we can start we can go to 930 Eastern Standard Time any day so pick a day sure. like a week ago and and then we'll we'll get we can set the play to just go like a either real time or fast forward or we can actually tap on it and go as fast as we want and so this particular day you can see Amazon Apple Dow and Spy are the ones that are kind of picked and so let's just you mm -hmm. know pick maybe Amazon and run through and see if we kind of get anything that sort of suggests that we we should be looking at it in terms of a trade sure so here's Apple now here's one of the other things uh, uh, for every trading system you need a junk filter so here's our the uh, profit zone I'm in a risk territory that's what this tinting tells me uh, but you can see here on the bottom that Apple on the multi day is looking good it's a previous high not just of one day but many days it gapped up a few days ago so people like the stock so I'm not fighting it the instrumentation up here says the market is going green so it's looking good so here at 936 uh, I wouldn't start trading most of the time before 936 market time I'm looking at this stock it's on my short list it's got high rank it's got you could get Amazon. I'm going to avoid Amazon There's, uh, for a moment. I'll talk about just Apple for now. Uh, Amazon had a massive gap. So here, this stock fit the rules. It's got the corner 10, got points 11, rank 12. This is like a great stock. 
the market is still generally green, uh, and that's what the green tint on the background is telling me. Everything about this is a good trade. So if I okay, say, so let's go bring up buy it, we bring the up buy the button. yeah. There, okay. Yeah, I wanted to make sure you did that. So, so this is the playing. Button. This is basically like Monopoly. So here's the buy button. Yeah. And so these percentage gains are uh, averages that give you a, a, an idea of what you're doing. Uh, when you get into live trading, there's some more learning to do, but it's a, it's just a small step after you've learned how to find a good trade. Um, so I'm down 2% roughly. I don't care. That's not a problem. Uh, I'm, everything still looks good. The market's green. Everything's fine. I don't get. Um, I didn't jump back into the mag line or the thing. It's you know that's where people get a little. Oh no, it's fluttering. It's like no. I'm going to turn on volume so you get an idea. We've got pretty good volume here. Um, I'm going to move forward a little bit more. Now I'm positive four uh, percent. I beat this, which is one of those turnaround points. But you can see 52-week high. That's usually a turnaround point too. I'm up eight percent, so I'm getting pretty close to getting out at a profit. I haven't lost points or rank. Everything's fabulous about this stock. Uh, now I'm at nine percent. If you wanted to, you can get out because you know that there might be a bounce at the 52 week, uh, so you can get out. There's 12 percent. That's good enough to say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to get paid. I'm going to let this run and just so you know, but me, I've done this so much, I just take the money because getting paid is what it's all about. And it's like you get get paid, paid, get, get paid, get paid. You can play with these things, but I would sell half the contracts or two-thirds of the contracts that you have on options and get paid. If you want to gamble with because you think, hope, believe that the others might run longer, those are the long shots. Remember, it's only one in ten that actually keep going, and there's reasons they do, but usually they have points and rank on their side. So how far is this thing going to go? Well, I don't think it's going to go much farther than RA, but maybe. The market's still green. I'm at 12% profit, 14 still. And then we'll go pick another trade, but you see this is, I've lost color back here. It's gone white. I'm at 6%. So on my last third, well, now I'm, it's, it, I, this auto changes time, so it, it added the color back. So uh, I'm at 14%, 11%. I'm just going to move forward a little faster. I've gone white again, which means that this, the trade stall, you'll notice that the mag line has gone dashed. I've got red. I've minus 3%. Uh, yeah, it might bounce off of the previous high. Well, at this point, what am I doing? I'm hoping. I'm not following a set of rules. I'm hoping. If you're hoping, as a, my Forex uh, partner talks about, uh, you're gambling. He is successful at his Forex. He uses this, by the way, as well. Uh, he uses the VAR bar. Uh, he says he would get out. So you're minus six, minus two. Yeah, it might. Well, now you're into the risk zone. You're below the mag line. Everything tells me that this is a losing trade situation. You're lucky if you can get out at break even. Let's just move forward a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so there was a chance to get out at break even. If I ever get in a bad trade, if I can get out near break even, small loss, I take it. Just because you don't control the market. And by the way, see the instrumentation is telling me out here that the market's running red right now. So, of course, this stock's running red. So I'm at minus 15%. I'm just going to keep going and just show you. This is what replay does for you. Is it's like, oh, well, you know, and it's like, well, what would I do and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm at minus 76%. I would have been so happy to get out at minus 10%, right? So I took a winning trade, and I know people that do this, that take a winning trade and turn it into a loser because they say, no, you're going to go. No, you're not going to go. It's going to do what it wants to do. So here's why Amazon, although it fit the rules generally, one of the reasons I did it, I'm just going to uh, switch to the, the 60 here so you can see it large. 
Um, and I'm going to put the time on so you can see the different days. So this was the previous day. This would be this recent Thursday. This isn't just a little gap. This is a big gap. And big gaps you have to treat with a little, you, you give them an hour. By the way, that's the magic formula. You give them an hour. And then you start to see what they do after an hour when they're a big gap. So here's Google, which was a good trade. This was not a monstrous gap. It was a decent gap. This was another good trade. Do you see the difference? How huge? And so here Google had a, a gap down from the previous day, but it wasn't a monstrous gap. You can see that it it wasn't it, it closed just below the previous, but there was a big difference between the, the previous ending of the day and then when the day started. And so you can trade these ones and make money. Gaps are a great way to make money. Here is a gap over here because uh, that's the end of that day, right? And that's the beginning of that day. It's a small gap, but this is what's called a gap and go. And gaps is what actually Murray trades, and that's the only thing he trades pretty much. And he's got a set of rules, and he follows them, and he's making consistent money. That's the only thing you want out of any trading system is consistent. That's why we have the replay. And uh, we'll just look at Google for a moment. Um, so, and you can see here, I'm going to turn all that off. So if it crawls back into the risk zone or crosses the mag line, you start losing color. Uh, even if it starts going dashed, uh, you, you can get out of the thing. But here we go. Here's Goog. Right, I'm back. Okay, there it is, 9.33. Does this not look familiar? It is like, I'm going to draw it for you. I am above the open price. I have uh, a small G, which means that it's not as good as a big capital G, but it's still good. The market is green right now. The basket is above the open. That's what that means. Everything's telling me that this is a good stock for going green. I look at the gap information, which is here, which is, for Google, not a big gap. That's a reasonable gap. Um, you can see how wide the candles are. Above the risk zone, I've got a fresh signal. This is like candle number one, right? Candle one or candle two is preferred. It's time to look at this thing to buy it, and we already kind of know that it's uh, going to go well, but let's just go bring up the tool that tells us, well, I want to go buy it. So I'm going to buy it. So in here, it'll tell me the percentage gain. 20% in one minute. The blue star is usually a clue for getting out if you're in a trade. It might continue on, but if you've made money, uh, it quite often bounces. By the way, People don't have this tool elsewhere. The, the blue star is like our stuff. Um, but, you know, here it is. It's still making you money. But if you already made 10%, you'll be a millionaire. If you just make 10% a day uh, and you grow your account, uh, you're good. See, it's lost, it's lost some of its uh, love and feeling here. See, I don't care to hang around and find out how it is. Oh, well, now it's minus 7%. That's the whole point about get paid. Get your, you know, what did it do here? It broke the mag line. It, uh, it's in the risk zone again. You've lost color. Uh, the half color here and the half height of it means it's, 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 it's going sideways. So, you know, why am I hanging around when I could have got paid? So if there's another signal for Goog, let's just look at that one for another signal. So, so you could have made money again on that one. I don't need to be hanging around for minus 7. Remember, we saw a minus 76. So hanging on is not the answer. And people that didn't get out in uh, 1929 and thought it's coming back never got their money back until 1954. So hanging on is not the answer. And that's why we call it day trading. You get so in, you I get, get out, and uh, you can sleep at night, but uh, don't hang on mm -hmm. to it unless you have to trade at 2 in the morning in Hawaii, in which case we're looking for a way to get to <laughs> get in and get out without having to, get to be awake. 
So, uh, so there's so, a lot of other a lot of other tools in the here. You don't need all the tools, um, but you know, just go with the basic stuff, uh, and then we'll, you know, learn about the other bits and then uh, make more trading strategies. But you only really need one trading strategy, and you only need one trade a day. And some days there won't be a good trade for your strategy. That means keep your money safe. Don't put it in a high probability of losing. And that's basically it. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll uh, talk to you all soon. Thanks, guys.